Hello and welcome to the next video in the ArduPilot on Cheap Flight Controller series. Now it's all about this model here. This is the AR Mini Wing, little 600mm kind of, more of a racing wing than anything else. But because we're using a little cheap and cheerful Omnibus F4 flight controller, we can fit everything inside this. And it, this platform is very quickly becoming my go to plane when I want to have a hoot about. It's very transportable, get loads of flight time on the batteries that I have in here. And having the RD Pilot goodness means that it does some amazing stuff. So have a look at some of the other videos where we've talked about how to download the log files because we're going to do this as part of this video on Auto Tune this time, and also how I've set up things like the telemetry on the Taranis radio so that it shows and gives me positive reporting about everything that's going on in the model when I'm flying. But for those of you that watched the maiden flights, you might have noticed that there's quite a lot of waggling going on, and that's because this needs to have an auto tune. Now, auto tune I would recommend is something that you do on all craft that you use with an Ardu Pilot firmware. So Ardu Copter, Ardu Plane, whatever you're using, go through an auto tune will make it behave an awful lot better. And I think that the Ardu Pilot defaults particularly for a plane, are probably not optimized for a little wing because I'm finding that it feels like it's overcompensating a little bit because this little wing is very lightweight, it's very agile and it's causing some of the unwanted behavior. So in this video, I'm going to go through the whole process, talk about the tips and tricks and how it did. We'll look at the PIDs before we do it. We'll look at the PIDs after and hopefully if you're following along with the series, then it'll all make sense. This isn't just for this particular model. It works with Pixhawk, whatever you're running the Ardu Plane or Ardu Copter software on. Again, I'd always recommend go and have a look at the documentation. The documentation is great and does a fantastic job of explaining how all this stuff works. But I know sometimes it's just easy to see somebody go through the process and also kind of go through some of the tips and tricks and gotchas that they've had because there is one or two. So the first thing we're going to need to do is set up one of the flight modes to be auto-tune. And that's just like we have already, find a switch. Um, I would normally recommend that you have the manual flight mode still for this. Also have your fly-by-wire A flight mode and also auto-tune. Uh, auto-tune is going to need quite a large space. And I'd recommend having the craft at a pretty decent height and give yourself lots of room. The initial tune PID settings that it uses when you flick into auto tune uh, are less than optimal. Let's put it that way. But the way it works is that every 10 seconds it's going to save an updated set of PIDs for the airframe that you're using. And by flying around and putting the sticks to their maximum position uh, for roll and then for pitch in turn, we'll get the plane pretty close to perfect. It won't be as good as a manual tune, but it'll be absolutely fine for 99% of pilots. Now, so now we've got that flight mode set up, let's just have a quick look at what is on the plane before I take it out to the field. Now, the first thing we need to do is look at the PIDs. So this is what the PIDs look like. We're going to compare them at the end. These are the default PIDs for an RD plane, and these are way too much for a little nimble plane like this. So we'll probably see at the end of this that they've all been dropped quite dramatically. The other thing I'm going to do while I'm in here, and I mentioned this in the Maiden video, is I'm going to turn on the Servo Auto Trim. Uh, it, this is a cool little thing in RD Plane, and what it does is figures out what the Servo Auto Trim needs to be and kind of saves that every 10 seconds. So whereas with other airframes, you've kind of got to trim it and then incorporate the trims and do all that for shenanigans with the flight control software, you can just turn this on and actually I just kind of leave it on these days and it kind of does it all for you. It means that if you flick back into manual mode, the servo positions uh, midpoints needed for straight level flight have all been figured out for you while you've been flying around in other flight modes. So let me show you some footage of how I did it. Um, go to the field, power everything up. I would launch in fly-by-wire A mode, get it up to a reasonable altitude. Again, make sure you have absolutely tons of room for this because when you first put it into auto-tune, it's going to feel very sloppy. And then once it's in auto-tune, start to then move the controls. I do a roll first. So I move the control to the maximum right position, then to the maximum left position. And what the, will happen is the auto tune mode will only allow it a certain amount of uh, pitch and roll movement. So you're not going to immediately start pulling loop the loops or barrel rolls. It's quite gentle and you don't want to keep it there for a long time. You kind of move the control to that maximum position and then hold it for a moment, then move it to the other position. And you're doing that. And what's happening is the PIDs are being tested 
and the software is iteratively trying to figure out what the PIDs need to be to get the commanded movement and the actual movement as close as they possibly can. Now you're supposed to do this for a minimum of 20 times as it says in the documentation because every time gets you about 5% closer to the perfect tune. I would say do it 20 times then fly around for a little bit and then do it for another 20 times. It saves the settings every 10 seconds uh, so if something really nasty starts to happen you can take it out of auto tune mode. Um, and it will go back to the last saved set of settings. But to be honest, I found that uh, with this particular craft, I started to get a really bad wobble in the pitch. Um, and I was really starting to get a bit panicky because it, it just felt like it was getting out of control. But continuing to fly, the flight controller continued to modify the PIDs and it settled down. It's obviously gone past the point and, uh, that uh, would work well for the airframe and very quickly brought it back down. So if that happens, don't panic. Uh, you can either take it straight out of auto tune or just keep flying and the flight controller will normally figure it out. Once that's done, I'd fly around once you're happy with it. Um, and I found that after about um, a dozen movements left and right, uh, the craft was starting to feel much more responsive and locked in. Keep going for the full 20, fly around, do another 20. Then I would then do the pitch controls. So put the nose down, put the control to the top of the radio, hold it there for just a moment, then back down to the bottom of the radio. And again, go through that cycle for at least 20 times fly straight and level for a bit, have a bit of a poodle around, then go through and do another 20. And by the time you're at the end of that, you'll be in good shape. Pop it out of auto tune. Uh, you don't really want to land in auto tune. I would go back into fly by wire A, uh, fly around, just make sure that you're happy with it. If there's something still not quite right, you can pop it back into auto tune for the axis that isn't very happy. Just make sure that you're keeping it in auto tune long enough so that all of those settings are saved. Again, it saves every 10 seconds. Put it into final flyby YA and bring it down and land it. So once we've got the thing back, uh, we can go onto the computer, download the logs and have a look. And again, if you're not sure about how to download the logs, I'll put a link in the description. Go and have a look at that video earlier in the series, uh, doing things like looking at the flight in Google Earth is fab fun. So here we are back on the computer. We can download the log. So what we're going to go is download the telemetry logs over Mavlink. We're going to highlight the log that we're interested in. The cool thing is, is the logs have the date and time stamped on them. So you can see exactly when the flight was. That date and time is uh, is on the system. So you don't have to worry about which is which. So let me just download that. And then once it's downloaded, we can do a very quick auto analysis uh, just to make sure that everything was OK. The auto analysis takes a moment to read through the logs and just come back and tell us if we have a problem. Uh, doing this on copters will show you if things are underpowered, if it's having to use too much throttle to maintain hover, that kind of stuff. And this looks fine. That's good. So now we've got that, let's go and have a look at the PID settings. So here are the new PIDs following that flight that we've just seen an excerpt from. And if we compare them to the original PIDs, you can see that they have been reduced dramatically. So hopefully these new PIDs will be the ones that I'll use now. I'll probably repurpose that switch and that flight mode position that I've been playing with for auto tune for something like auto, uh, so I can set up auto launch and I'll probably do that in the next video. Last little cool thing, let me show you what's actually going on here. Uh, you can open up the log files and you can do some amazing things in here. And again, this is some of the really powerful stuff that's in the Ardu Pilot software. And you can look at all the different parameters throughout the flight. So I'm going to look at what I was asking the flight controller to do and what the flight controller was actually doing. And initially you can see here that the actual movement that the craft is doing versus the commanded movement is way too big. Uh, the PIDs are nowhere near where they need to be for such a little craft. And then it iteratively gets better and better and better until it's pretty much locked in. Last couple of things that you need to do once you've got this all working, uh, covered in the documentation, there's a nav L1 period that you probably need to change. Uh, it talks about that. And there's also the pitch to serve roll. Uh, pr that parameter controls how much elevator to add in when it's doing turns to keep the nose level. Uh, you might need to tweak that a little bit on your particular craft. But now you've got it tuned, you'll be able to see how it behaves as you are flying around. And if you start to turn and the nose is dropping, then you can change that one. But the documentation is fab for this stuff. You can just kind of follow it through. 
The only thing I'm going to change as well is the maximum angle for both pitch and roll in the fly-by-wire A settings. In a normal larger plane, uh, the defaults are pretty good. With the smaller 600 millimeter agile wing, it feels a little bit too uh, too sedate. And there've been a couple of times where I've been flying around, and I'm not leaving myself quite enough time to uh, to pull the nose up and clear obstacles. So I'm cutting some things a bit fine. So I'm just going to increase those two just to give myself a bit more agility back in that very fun flight mode that you have in Ardu Pilot. So hopefully that's interesting. Join me in the next video where we'll look at setting up uh, auto launch. Auto launch is something that's been rumored to be coming as a flight mode, but to be able to set it up, you can just save it as a, a command for an automatic mission and the plane will take off just by throwing it into the sky. And it's a great way to launch the thing. So join me in that next video where we'll have a look at that piece next. Thanks for watching the video and watching right to the very end. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you like the video and like what I'm doing here, then hit the subscribe button and hit the bell notification icon too. If you really like what I'm doing, you can go the extra mile and become one of my Patreons for access to me directly for support and also giveaways and regular updates too. If you're looking for particular content, then check out the playlist. I organize all of my videos into playlists. So if you're looking for a particular topic, you can find everything here. If it's called Introduction 2, it's designed to start very simply and build on that simple introduction to teach you all about it. If it's called For Beginners, then that is really aimed at people who are brand new to that part of the hobby. You can also search on YouTube for anything that you're interested in using the search function at the top. So iNav Painless 360 will find all of my videos and even the playlists around iNav. So thanks again for watching and happy flying.